opportunity to have a student walk in with a shotgun. And as we all know, our community has had some, some serious things happen lately as well. Um, in fact, I'm not going to ask you questions. I know you can't answer, but it is a federal statistic, not mine, it's not my opinion, that one out of five children, children, before, before reaching the age of 18, has been exposed to something that has met a degree of criminal prosecutability, not just something that would make a parent upset. And this is our government's federal statistics. These come out every four years. They are not mentioned. I do not know why. But here's the deal. There is nobody between those kids and what's happening to them other than you. There's no one who has a hat whose job it is. The people who gather the statistics, our federal government, also gather statistics on how much salad they're eating and a bunch of other things. That's what's published. This statistic has been out there for a decade. I wrote about it 15 years ago. I'm not the only one. I don't want to discuss this statistic. That's not why I'm here. It is one out of five. You can look it up. So whose job is it? You are the only ones who can do anything. Okay. First off, how can you do it? It's not your job. Who's going to let you? And what can be done? Triage. You can find out what the numbers are. For our students, quarter million students, real numbers. It's called anonymous polling. If it costs a million dollars, I could ask you for a million dollars and you'd be all impressed and give it to me. It involves a penny. You flip a penny. You ask the students. You tell them. If it's heads, you say yes. If it's tails, you answer the question. I had planned on giving you each a penny and inquiring as to whether your favorite pie was apple or pumpkin. It's a bit complicated because you can't answer, so I'm going to skip ahead. We could still do it. I could ask you to write on a piece of paper. Pick the top or the bottom. I could ask you to do it now if I can't ask you for your permission. <clears throat> but let's say you were to write on a piece of paper. I'd say, okay, pick one. You pick the top or the bottom. I'd say, okay, call the top heads, bottoms, tails. Have you, now, if it were children, I can phrase this much more carefully. Three minutes is the end of the day. It could be phrased as, you know, and you will spend hours deliberating this. Believe me, the question can be phrased. Has anything happened that you were uncomfortable, that you felt trapped and you couldn't share with an adult? It could be that simple. And you can have an answer that will not uh, upset parents. It won't upset the kids. Uh, if I ask, uh, excuse me for pointing, but one of you, whether your favorite pie is apple or whatever, you won't tell me. But I can ask all of you. You'll. You'll say heads, heads, tails, tails, heads, 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 tails, tails. None of you will know whose favorite pie or whatever. Okay, so we can ask our children these tough questions. Okay, that is not an excuse. Yes, I'm out of time. Okay. Yes, you wrap up, please. That, to wrap up, please consider, and perhaps we should have a discussion. We could have a meeting, board meetings, uh, talk with you people, whatever is necessary. One thing I was very encouraged, you are all so motivated, and we're all talking about money. Please don't think about any of these things. It's not, not an issue of money. It is an issue of acknowledging that there's a problem and then worrying about it. If a child is on fire, and that's what we're talking about, this is literal abuse, and they're on fire now, not next month, not last month, it's not someone else's kids. As we're speaking, out of a quarter of a million kids, uh, students 50 are, are newly being abused as we're speaking. And they're on fire in pain now this second. So it is not a matter of whose hat is it. The CDC quietly changed the rules on everyone and mentioned, oh, by the way, this is transmittable community-wise. Not familially, not within families. But if you are born within a community that starts to exhibit these problems, culturally, our brains respond. Fighters for poverty, fighters for people that look like you and me, fighters to make sure that our communities are safe worldwide, fighters for standing up for things that, that are important to us. So we want to welcome them. We want to welcome them with open arms and we want to welcome them standing up when they come out. Fighters to make sure that our communities are safe worldwide, fighters for standing up for things that, that are important to us. So we want to welcome them. We want to welcome them with open arms, and we want to welcome them standing up when they come You look at me and run, you run well, I, commend, I commend all of you for, for being here. And everyone is struggling trying to bring forward a fact. Poverty. No one believes it. A lot of people simply do not believe that kids are hungry or elderly are hungry. I have a solution. Let's ask the kids. Let's ask them, how many kids are hungry? Why not? Why can't we?
we ask our kids in the class how many are hungry? Well, because we don't want to single anyone out. So yes, 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 very, yes. very quickly, anonymous polling. We can anonymously poll our kids every day. It should be a regular part of class. Instead of singling them out, do you or don't you know a question individually? I can ask, how many kids did their homework? And I'll get a response from the class as a percentage poll. It's called anonymous polling. You flip a coin, the kid answers yes if it's heads. A response from the class as a percentage poll. It's called anonymous polling. You flip a coin, the kid answers yes if it's heads. And the answer is polling. You flip a coin, the kid answers yes if it's heads. And the answer is already. We already want to do things. I think it's our eyes that are lacking. Okay, I think when people hear, oh, one out of five kids are criminally victimized. You talked about people who can't defend themselves. Even an elderly person <clears throat> usually has more wherewithal. They know who to call, or someone to call. They have someone to call. Kids, they have no one. If they're in crisis, with the statistics are one out of five are criminally attacked by 18. Criminally means it's meant the criminal definition. Can be taken to jail for doing something. Now, most of us as parents, we get upset way before it reaches criminality. So if it's one out of five, there was a million father march. 200,000 fathers of the million father march should be up in arms about the one out of five statistic. So we hear these statistics and they go in one ear out the other. It's like stepping over the dying person for a coffee. We do that every time we hear the statistic of one in five kids in abuse. And we let it go in one ear and out the other. Same thing with poverty. We, we, we try to put a human face on. So it's every morning, it should be a part of class. We talk about inclusion. If I'm over well, the Let me jump in right quick, though. So, I'm just talking about your logic. So, kids come in the classroom every morning, you want to ask them if they're hungry. Half the class says yes, then what? Then I want to look you and their parents in the eye and say, it's not some other kids that are hungry. I want to go to these people here in this, this room and say, half of your kids are hungry, and I want to jump up and down and scream. I can't scream quite as much because it's like, well, they might be hungry, or it's some other kids, or it's the statistics in a paper. Okay, I think this individualized, I think it'd be very powerful. Yeah, thank you for your comment, we appreciate it. Yes, sir. Hi there, a response from the class as a percentage poll. It's called anonymous poll, and you flip a coin, the kid answers yes if it's heads. You flip a penny, you pass to the students, and you tell them, if it's heads, you say yes. If it's tails, you know, whose job is it? You're the only ones who can do anything, okay? First off, how can you do it? It's not your job. Who's gonna let you? And what can be done? Triage. You can find out what the numbers are. For our students, quarter million students, real numbers, it's called anonymous polling. If it cost a million dollars, I could ask you for a million dollars and you'd be all impressed and give it to me. It involves a penny. You flip a penny, you ask the students, you tell them. If it's heads, you say yes. If it's tails, you answer the question. I had planned on giving you each a penny and inquiring as to whether your favorite pie was apple or pumpkin. It's a bit complicated because you can't answer, so I'm going to skip ahead. We could still do it. I could ask you to write on a piece of paper. Pick the top or the bottom. I could ask you to do it now if I can't ask you for your permission. <clears throat> but let's say you were to write on a piece of paper. I'd say, okay, pick one. You'd pick the top or the bottom. I'd say, okay, call the top heads, bottoms, tails. Have you, now, if it were children, I can phrase this much more carefully. Three minutes, it's the end of the day. It could be phrased as, you know, and you will spend hours deliberating this. Believe me, the question can be phrased. Has anything happened that you were uncomfortable, that you felt trapped and you couldn't share with an adult? It could be that simple, and you can have an answer that will not upset parents, it won't upset the kids. Uh, if I ask, uh, excuse me for pointing, but one of you, whether your favorite pie is apple or whatever, you won't tell me, but I can ask all of you. You'll, you'll say heads, heads, tails, tails, heads, 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 tails, tails. None of you will know whose favorite pie or whatever, okay? So we can ask our children these tough questions. They have not